Hello everyone, Ilena Leka is my name and welcome to another English class. You can join me here every Monday for a new English lesson. And so have my two students today. Let me introduce them to you. Ayan, who's here for the first time, and Patricia, whom you've already met. Hi, Ayan. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Hi. Great to have you around. And I'd like to start with a picture this time. Next to the picture, there's also a sort of joke. So there's a question and the answer as well. Why are fish so clever? Because they're always in schools. Ayan, can you explain what the joke is about? So uh, the joke is about that uh, the word school can have different meanings because uh, school can mean a building and school can also mean a group of fish. Excellent. All right. So the whole um, joke is plays upon the double meaning of the word school. We know the word school when we refer to the building that we go to in order to learn new things. I go to school as well, although um, I'm not a student, I'm a teacher, but I always learn uh, things from my students. And school is also the word that we use to describe the group of fish. So yeah, they are clever, they are very intelligent because they go to school or because they're always in schools. So that's why we need to go to school to learn new things and to be smarter every day. And I'd like us to start with an activity in which I'm going to ask for your opinions. There will be sentences on the board and you will choose between the words in italics, I think or I don't think, and explain your choice to me. And I'd like to start with Patricia. I think it's important for children to like going to school because that's how you learn properly. Because if you learn without uh, liking it, then it would feel forced. So when you like school and when you like going to the school, you're more likely to get involved more and learn more stuff. Excellent. What are the things that matter to children? Maybe their friends or the teachers. Personally, I go to school because I like to socialize with um, my friends and it makes just a nice class with the teachers. If the teacher knows how to make the lesson interesting and attract the, the attention of all children, that's going to be a success. And on to you, Ayan, now. I'd like you to consider uh, this sentence. I believe uh, that teachers should encourage students to learn because uh, if they don't, then the students basically just won't learn. And there's no point in going to school if you're not going to learn other than, may, I don't know, maybe making some friends and you genuinely won't get anywhere in life if you don't learn yeah yeah you're quite right uh, i think encouragement plays an essential role in class it's because students feel appreciated for their efforts and this also boosts self-esteem self-confidence and being confident while learning is essential all right, we'll move on to one more. Back to you, Patricia. I like learning foreign languages since I've been learning German and English for eight years now. So I like them because it helps me a lot, it's especially that English is a universal language, so I can speak it wherever. And I like learning it because it's mostly fun. Can you think of some ways in which languages, not just English, because you mentioned German as well, will help you in the future? For example, when you want to study abroad and you go to Germany or Austria, you have to learn a, a little bit of German so you get used to it. And that's probably one of the cases or when you go on holidays. Good. Okay, so education would be one reason going on holidays because you need to interact with the people, with the locals. All right. How about the job? Do you think that later on in life it will help you if you know a certain language to get a better job, I mean? 
Yes, definitely. It's um, it's not a necess necessary, but uh, it helps you a lot with, I don't know, you might work as a lawyer, for example, and you need to know the law in that language, or you simply just, you have customers that are from different countries and you know how to communicate with them. So I guess it could be a plus, but not in all cases. Mm -hmm. And okay. let's imagine the situation in which you work for a company which is actually outside your country. Knowing a foreign language is essential in that case. Mm -hmm. Good. Ayan, this is for you. How do you feel about uh, maths? Maths uh, does, doesn't sound wonderful to me. Uh, I do not like math, only a bit of it, for example, geometry. I'm okay at it and I like it. But uh, let's say algebra, I'm not good at it at all and I do not find it fun. But so I, know, I know some people do mm -hmm. and it's good to find math fun because uh, it might right. help later in life. Of course it helps in life. But can you tell me a subject that you do find fun? PE, I guess. Mm. The only one. Right, we use PE short for physical education. So he likes to practice sports. Why do you find PE class, the PE class fun? Because uh, I just like sports in the uh, most part. And I like the freedom of PE and uh, the fact that you can do almost whatever you want in PE. You can even mm -hmm. do your homework. I sometimes do that. Mm -hmm. And what kind of, uh, do, you, do you like uh, playing games in your PE class? I mean, do you enjoy those uh, activities in which you cooperate with other people or are you more competitive? To be honest, I'm kind of both. I really like playing uh, football in uh, PE and sometimes basketball and uh, maybe some badminton. But uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Nothing else. Yeah, right. And there is one more. Back to you, Patricia. I have a passion for history. Mm. I am passionate about history since I had this teacher that was explaining it to me really good. And so I started to like it, even though before I hated it. I couldn't learn anything else. Le learning it forcefully um but then he started to explain the way i can understand and i can like at the same time and now i have a passion about it i like to go to the museums and i really love learning and playing games that are based on history mm. all right oh, nice, nice point okay is this your favorite subject or is there any other subject you like more than this one i'm gonna say i like maths more definitely not like i am <laughs> but oh, uh nice. i do love also uh the geometry part more than the algebra but i like math more because i learned how to work with it so it's easier for me at this point all right thank you both for sharing your opinions with me. We'll now move on and I'd like us to consider these pairs of sentences. In each pair, A and B, one of the sentences is incorrect. So I'd like you to read them both and decide which one is the incorrect one. We'll start with you, Ayan. Please consider the first pair. I'm thinking you're right. I think uh, biology is a very fascinating subject. Which one would you say is the incorrect sentence? Fascinating. I think the first one. I'm going to cross it out because indeed this is the wrong sentence. Okay. We say, I think biology is yeah. a very fascinating uh, subject because we're expressing our opinion. But the verb think, if we use it in the continuous form, may not mean the same thing, okay? So if I say, 
I'm thinking, I cannot continue the sentence by saying you're right. Now, Patricia, please consider the next pair and tell me which one is incorrect. I think the incorrect one is the second one because it has a verb I'm not understanding. Mm -hmm. All right, understand is one of those verbs that we can never use in the continuous form. So you're quite right about this choice. We say, I can understand your reasons, but we can never say I'm understanding or I'm not understanding. Never, never. Ayan, for the third one, you can read the sentences and then tell me which one is the incorrect. A uh, sentence say, I need more time to write uh, the essay. Uh, and B, I think I'm needing help with my project. Uh, I'm needing, I feel like it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your instinct is good, is right. This is not the right sentence, indeed. Patricia, for number four. I'm liking web design or I like your handwriting. Definitely the first one because like is not a verb to use with ing. Excellent. And there's one more pair for you, Ayan. Uh, it seems to me that students need to develop more practical skills. Chemistry is seeming a bit difficult to me. I think that uh, the second one might be the incorrect one. And indeed, this is the wrong one. Excellent choices. Very good. Whether you know the rules or not, you have certainly made the good decisions here. Now, last week we talked about those situations in which we use the simple present and the situations in which we use the present continuous. Today, I'm going to add one more piece of information which is essential when it comes to simple versus continuous forms. There are verbs which we generally call state verbs. And some examples include the verbs that you have read in the previous sentences. They are called state verbs because they describe states rather than actions. And normally they are not used in the continuous form. Now I'm going to provide more examples of state verbs. Some of them are verbs of thinking, like the verb to think. Together with it, we can also give examples like the verbs to agree, to believe, to know, remember, and understand. So that's why I am, um, said that I'm not understanding is not the correct word, because understand is never used in the continuous form. It's a state verb. Then there are verbs of attitude, like like, love, hate, need, prefer, want, and wish. Verbs of perception, for instance, hear, see, smell, or taste. And also verbs of appearance, for instance, the verb to appear, look when it means seem or appear, seem, of course, and sound. And verbs of possession, like be, belong, contain, have, own. In this category, under the larger umbrella term of state verbs, we also include other verbs like cost, fit, mean, and owe. When it comes to the verbs feel and look, we can use either the simple or the continuous form with no change in meaning. Whether we say, I feel ill, or I'm feeling good, it's the same thing. You look tired or you look, you're looking great. And again, there's no difference in meaning. But remember, state verbs are not normally used in the continuous form. Some of them may be used in the continuous. In that case, they are no longer state verbs, but they become action verbs. And uh, what you see on the screen now is examples of such verbs that may be used in the continuous form, changing their meaning. If I say, I think you're great, this is a state verb. I think means I believe. But if I say, I'm thinking of getting a degree, 
it means I'm considering, I'm planning doing this. So Ayan, when I asked you earlier about finishing the sentence in a way that makes sense, beginning with I'm thinking, I was thinking of this meaning of the verb, consider, plan. Another example is the verb to love. If I say I love studying robotics, it means I enjoy this subject. But let's imagine that I am attending a party, I'm really enjoying myself and the experience, so I say I'm loving this party. Another example are verbs of perception. For instance, the verb to see. I see her crossing the street. Mean, it means I'm using my eyes. It's my ability to see something. But if I say I'm seeing my dentist tomorrow, the continuous form transforms this verb into an action verb and the meaning changes, meaning it means to meet or to have an appointment with a dentist. This cake tastes delicious, meaning it has a delicious flavor. This is the state verb. But if I say, why are you tasting the milk? I'm referring to the action. You are actually testing the flavor to see maybe if the milk has gone off. She is really passionate about physics. This is something that describes her character permanently. But if I say his being a bit naughty, the verb changes its meaning. It becomes an action verb, which means to behave, meaning it's not like him to be naughty. But today, for some reason, he is being a bit naughty. They have a big house. Have is a state verb here. It means to own to possess. But if I say we're having a party tonight, it means I'm referring to the action of throwing, organizing a party. In the same way, we say, for instance, we're having lunch. I'm having a shower. Okay? So remember, state verbs are not normally used in the continuous form. But some of them, and I have provided here some examples, may, in which case they become action verbs. And um, they change their meaning. Now we're going to practice this, don't worry. And we'll start with an exercise in which you are going to select the correct answer. Ayan, it's your turn first. We are having dinner right now. Yeah, okay. We're having dinner. Patricia? Do you see that bag? It's Anna's. Good, because remember, to be seeing Somebody means to meet somebody, to have an appointment with. Good. Ayan? These roses smell really sweet. Good. The state verb, are smelling, designates the activity. So that's not the case here. Patricia? Sophie is thinking of moving house. Good, because she is considering, she is planning doing this. And the last one, Ayan? I think I need some help with my presentation. Excellent. Need is never used in the continuous form. Well done. We're now going to practice some uh, conversation exercises uh, in a specific context. The first one is studying for a test. So two students studying for a test. Patricia will be A, Ayan is B, and we're going to complete this conversation using the verbs given in brackets, either in the simple or the continuous form of the present. Are you ready for the history test tomorrow? Uh, I thought so, but I'm still studying. History usually makes sense to me, but this chapter is confusing. I think so, right? Because we use the present, simple oh, yeah. or continuous. I think so. Yeah, go on. I understand. Mm -hmm. What part are you having trouble with? The events from the 19th century. They uh, appear more complex than I expected. Well, if you need any help, Feel free to ask. We can go over it together later. Good. Excellent. And here's a second conversation in which people are trying on clothes. Ayan, it will be your turn now to be A. Patricia, you will read the B lines, please. Uh, how's your shopping going? Not so well. I'm trying on a dress, but it doesn't fit properly. Uh, oh no, that's disappointing. Do you uh, need some help? Yes, please. I'm having trouble with the zipper. 
Can you give me a hand? Very good. And here's one more. Two students are discussing school activities. Patricia, you're A, Ayan is B. What are you doing after school today? I have soccer practice on Mondays. I love playing soccer. It's my favorite sport. That sounds fun. Are you also involved in any clubs at school? Yes, I'm part of the art club. I'm not the best artist, but I uh, like being creative and expressing myself through art. Are you seeing your friends after soccer practice tonight? Actually, I think of going to the movies with my girlfriend if she wants us to. You have the preposition of over here, so I... I am thinking. Mm -hmm. Good, because you're planning, you're considering this plan of going to the movies instead of meeting your friends. Very good. There were some traps there for you, but you were so brave. You've gone through it uh, so well. Okay. And just to wrap it up, we started with a joke. Maybe we can finish with some jokes too. Here are some questions which we're going to match with the answers. Ayan, what is a snake's favorite subject at school? His study. Uh, right, because snakes hiss, right? Patricia, why did the math book look sad? Because it had too many problems. Too many problems. You see, again, the word problem is one that we use to talk about um, uh, difficult situations we have in life. But then again, we use the same word when it comes to maths. We solve problems every time. So, of course, the book is so sad. Too many problems around. Why did the student bring a ladder to school? Ayan? Because he wanted to go to high school. All right. He wanted to go to high school. We call high school this... Uh, how old are we when we go to high school? 14, 15. 14, yeah, 15. 15. All right. So now we understand what high school is. Now, what do you call a bear with no teeth, Patricia? A gummy bear. A gummy bear, because our teeth are in our gums. If we don't have any teeth, we just have the gums, so a gummy bear. And why was the computer cold, Diane? It left its windows open. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Ayan, Patricia, time to say goodbye. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. 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 And for those of you who have joined me once more today, thank you. Here's a warm hug. And I'm looking forward to our next class. When is that? Next Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.